seven minutes past eight here on 101.5 at Sports Fever Time. Song about ping pong. Ping pong is about the only sport we're not talking about today, Swamp. Yeah, well, two weeks uh, two weeks out of the studio, Mark. We, uh, there's plenty to cover, but uh, ping pong next week for sure, I think. Now, it's been a long time since we've been able to talk about a Dolphins home game, a months between home uh, games. Tell you what, they'll be dusting off the cobwebs around Dolphins. I know, over. I know. I'll tell you what I love this weekend. It's Stradbroke weekend. It's richest race in Queensland, but also... A Dolphins home game on a Sunday. What a weekend it's going to be. And joining us on the line is the number one ticket holder for the Mighty Fins, Rupert McCall. Good morning to you. Top of the morning to you, Matty Duncan. How are you, boys? And happy birthday, Swampy Marsh. Ah, uh, Cheers, Rupert. Pleasure, mate. Yeah, it's good um, Good to be talking to you, boys. And, yeah, got a, that rugby test uh, in the middle of the of the two between the uh, Stradbroke and the Dolphins home game. Uh, Wallabies taking on Wales at Suncorp Stadium. They'll want to bounce back from uh, from Tuesday night's loss to Scotland. But anyway, we're, we're here to talk rugby league. And speaking of uh, you know of, of dates, it's, it's a day of celebration for you, Swampy, but it, it's a day of commemoration for all Dolphins fans and supporters because it was 12 months ago to this day that uh, the big fella, um, Esmond Patrick Webb, passed away. Yeah, very sad day. For, for Dolphins 12 months ago that we, we lost as um, and we had you on the show uh, last year in our tribute show uh, uh, Rupert and, and just take for you know for all Dolphins fans out there and, and some of those people that may not be aware of, of what a legend Dez, Dez was around I guess not only the, the Dolphins but the Peninsula and, and Morton Bay sport as, as a whole take us through you know what Dez meant to the Dolphins oh, as I said mate he was the rock of, of rugby league in Redcliffe you know he started as a player uh, and uh, and then continued on as a coach and ultimately became president of the of the Dolphins. You know, one of the big three, um, the three sort of, I guess, godfathers of, of rugby league on the peninsula, um, Donnie McLennan, uh, Tossa Turner, and then Des Webb. You know, very humble guy, but, uh, but just such an inspiration, you know, for those uh, around the club. And, you know, I'm sure the boys will turn it into a positive as, as they leave the sheds and... And head down the tunnel. There's that that beautiful mural painting of uh, of Des Webb that stares them in the eyes. They take the field, and I'm sure they will. Uh, that'll lift them on on Sunday against Burley. Rupert, what uh, lingers in my memory from about this time last year it was, uh, I think, uh, about a week and a half after the sad passing of Des, and I happened to be at the uh, the Peninsula Powers annual game against the Brisbane Roar. And of course, uh, you know, the sporting fraternities of, of rugby league and soccer don't mix too often, but the uh, the power held a, a minute silence, and, and there wasn't a, a, a player or, or a fan or a supporter there that day that didn't know who Des was and the contribution that he made to, to sport in, in the Redcliffe and, and the Moreton Bay region. So his, right. his, his legacy just extends. While is is immeasurable at the Dolphins, it extends so far just into into the sport in the Redcliffe community in general. He's a, he's an absolute true legend. But uh, of course, the uh, the mighty Finns, and I'm sure Des will be watching on this weekend. Then when they return home to watch him run out under that wonderful mural and some uh, some good news, Marty Hatfield back from injury, and what a return from Joey Bond last week. Yeah, he is dynamic. That that little bloke. Uh, you know. I'd... I think he's our our answer to Matt Bowen at fullback. He just has the ability to uh, turn turn it on, you know, make something out of nothing. It was uh, it was a hard day, wasn't it? You know, a couple of months ago at Winter Manly, when when both boys dislocated their elbows and Tommy Butterfield was injured, but you know they're back now for that crew, and uh, it's it's been a great quality of the Dolphins this year that. Uh, you know, no matter who's been out, no matter who's been called away on Broncos duty, whoever has pulled on that red and white jersey has uh, felt capable and believed in themselves to do the job. And uh, that's been a great reflection of our season thus far. Yeah, some great depth there at the moment. And you speak of that Broncos duty. And uh, congratulations to Nick Sliney, who gets his second call-up for the Broncos this year. And well-deserved his form for the Dolphins has been outstanding. He won't let him down, the boy from Atherton. Uh, you know, you're right. He's, uh, he's missed everywhere. And, uh, you know, he, he got the opportunity to uh, be connected with the, with the Broncos this year. And Anthony Griffin knows that, uh, you know, he's capable of filling the breach uh, in the NRL. Uh, so, yeah, good luck to Nick Sliney. And uh, I, I guess, you know, on a, on a, uh, a more disappointing note, and you, you guys will have seen it when, when uh, Big Dave Haler went down injured again. In the last five minutes of that Broncos game against the Storm, I mean, it was it was quite, uh, you know, I just felt sick in the stomach for the big fella. He's coming back from an injury and he'll be probably out for the rest of the season, but don't write him off. I'm sure he'll be back. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Big Papa, as they call him around the Broncos and, and the Dolphins there, he will no doubt be back uh, uh, stronger and fitter than ever. I was much the same as you, Rupert. I had that sort of sick feeling in the stomach uh, as uh, as he went down and, and sort of to, to see him in such pain. Now, after he played such a, a, a good game to that point and, and immediately before that injury made such a strong line break as well. But uh, we wish Dave all the best. Now, of course, big game this weekend. Um, uh, Hatfield back from injury. Good to see both him and Joey Bond back from those dislocated elbows and, and brave to see them back quite so early. you think an injury like that would keep them out for so long, but uh, I know following those boys on Twitter, they've been uh, working very hard in the gym and in rehab to be fit again. Yeah, credit to, to them. Credit to the hard yards they've put in and, and the medical staff. I mean, the, the boys are back to, you know, you know big Paul Ivan. I, I haven't seen the run on team. I'm not sure whether he's playing, you know, in the back row to cover uh, Nick Slot. Yeah, he or, has... Or, Hatfield slotted straight into into the centre spot, and uh, Paulie's gone back into the back row. Well, that's that's great. You know, I see that uh, Dane Gagai will be running on for Newcastle uh, this uh, this weekend. So, you know, things change quickly, don't they? Uh, um, and, and Dane won't be there, of course. But again, you know, we've got guys coming back: Matty Hatfield, J- Joe Bond, etc., um, Delroy Berryman. That they will fill the breach, and, and they'll do it well. And they'll have to do it well on Sunday because. You know, Burley have been up and down this season, but but they are dangerous. They've got the you know the Titans connection, the likes of Steve Michaels and Jordan Rankin and, and Brent and Lawrence. And you know if if you actually if you if you take it easy, even at home, if you, if you you know run out there expecting anything or taking anything for granted, well, any side can hurt you. But I'm sure that uh, that uh, Johnny Dixon will have our our minds focused on the job. And uh, a strong rivalry there with Burley, particularly from the early 2000s, mid-2000s. They were one of the strongest rivals for the Dolphins, weren't they? Yeah, and uh, 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 sort of, I guess, the epitome of that uh, rivalry was 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 a great player and a good mate of mine, but I have Trent Lease, you know, who uh, had a few games for the Cowboys in the NRL, but then came to Redcliffe, of course, the son of Peter Lease, and then went down and played for Burley, and, uh, you know, they're, 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 that, that, that's the case in the Queensland Cup with players, you know, you know shopping around a little bit, but um, it has been a great rivalry. They were a top side, and uh, we'll have to be on our game on Sunday. I, I still uh, shed a tear every time I picture Trent Lee scoring in the corner for Burley there, uh, Rupert. I, I still can't get over that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit like uh, Mick Reardon. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't mention that. No, no. Never we that said no. never to mention that again. <laughs> sorry, I apologise, but uh, there's uh, Trent going over in the corner and putting an end to our season. But that was then, this is now, and uh, hopefully it'll be a, a man in you know red and white going over in the corner in front of a pig pen on, uh, on Sunday afternoon. Sounds good to me. Rupert, we thank you uh, for your time again, and uh, have you got a tip in the Stradbroke for us on Saturday? Oh gee, it's it's that's that's a that's a hard one, isn't it? I mean, I've been following Sea Siren, and I've backed it in its last two starts. But you know, you'll have to, or she'll have to carry uh, 55. Um, well, so I'm going to stick with Sea Siren. I think she's something special. And John O'Shea, um, North Queenslander, he wouldn't have her in there if he didn't think that uh, that she could lift and win. Um, you know, the, the the track. Hopefully, it will be. Uh, you know what? The rain won't come. They're predicting a bit of rain for the weekend, but hopefully, it'll be uh, in good shape. And so, uh, I'll stick with the horse. It served me well for this winter carnival, and. Uh, and tip the favourite. Yeah, me too. I'm on board. So uh, let's hope for a seesaw and dolphins double this weekend. Good on you, boys. Uh, it's always great to talk. And uh, don't forget, three o'clock dolphin oval Sunday afternoon. It's going to be a ripper, folks. Be there. Thanks, Rupert. Cheers, Rupert. Cheers. He always pumps us up, Swamp, every week, Rupert McCall. Oh, I can't wait. It feels like forever since we've been uh, sitting on that hill at Dolphin Oval, man. I'll need directions to get there. <laughs> it's been a long time between drinks. And uh, a very different side that we... Or, or not very different, but uh, different to what uh, we've been seeing the last couple of weeks to so the Dolphins running in there and we're missing both. I think last time we were out there, Dave Harley was uh, was smashing up the Norse boys and uh, Nick Sliney always strong and Dane Gay guy... Uh, putting in the, the hard yards as well, but n- none of those three will be there this weekend, but uh, like Rupert said, the, whoever the Dolphins have, have put into that Queensland Cup side this year, they've been able, they've been ready, and they've m- more than done the job for John Dixon, and that's a real credit to the senior group that the club has built there, um, that the players are just ready to, to slot straight into that side and, and know their job and know what they've got to do, and um, it, we found some real stars that way in, in this year, and most particularly in Delroy Berriman. The, the more I see him play, the more I become a fan. He's uh, he's really stepping up in the senior grades this year. He's been fantastic, Delroy, absolutely, uh, and not often you'll see the scorer's sheet 
that Berryman hasn't scored when he when he's played. And what about the form of Liam Georgetown? He's a favourite here at Sports Fever. We make uh, we don't hide that fact, but uh, I think he scored 17 tries this season. He's um, really kind of on track to maybe break the the Queensland Cup try scoring record for a season. Oh, and if, if he keeps going, he's just been the, the Dolphins' go to man out um, out there, and his goal kicking's been on, on on the money too for most of the season as well as it always is. So he's uh, he's just racking up the the individual points, uh, a big tally there. I think there was a statistic thrown around a couple of weeks ago that he would scored more points than Burley. Oh, Burley, then, then yeah, Burley. Go, so. in, by himself this yep. season. So um, if we got Lum on the field, we shouldn't need the other guys on there. Just no, throw Lum out there. We'll be right. Just the Lum stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just hope he doesn't get 10 in the bin, otherwise we might be in strife. So, no, looking forward to that one. It'll be a big weekend, a big Sunday. No better way to spend a Sunday of a long weekend than at Dolphin Oval. But yeah, I'll give absolutely. you one tip. Take a jumper. Yeah, that wind getting up, it'll be a, a bit fresh once that sun sort of just goes down over the hill just after half time. Uh, jumper required, it, I think. It can get chilly at Dolphin Oval in the middle of February, so don't worry. <laughs> in the middle of June, it's freezing, so take a jumper. But it'll be still a great day out at Dolphin Oval this Sunday. Three big grades of rugby league. Colts kicking off at quarter to 12. It's 20 past eight here on Sports Fever. Plenty more to come in the show, Swamp. Who else have we got this morning, mate? We've got uh, Blake Bright from the, uh, the Caboolture Suns basketball. The, the Suns men have started their season in wonderful fashion. They've picked up five wins from five games. So Blake will be coming on to give us a bit of an update about the Suns and how they are travelling. And we've also got uh, our Stradbroke jockey, Matty. You'll have to... Fill me in on the name. Uh, Jason McLaughlin, trainer of Feeling Ready, uh, of course, son of uh, legendary trainer Bruce McLaughlin, who trained at uh, Upper Caboolture, the Thornhill Park property for many years. We were talking to Jason at about quarter to nine this morning. And don't forget, over the moon, it's, it's been back. been a while since we've actually spoke to Mooney on the phone. We weren't on last week. And then the week before, uh, he was tied up with some other things, so he's back. Uh, we'll still, we've got a few entries in, but we'll still take a couple more if you want to ring in with your NRL tips and we'll put them into the hat and draw them out. So 5495 1015. But you want us to call now because we're about to close off in the next five minutes. That number again, 5495 1015. And that's when a $50 voucher from our sponsors of the Caboolture Sports Club. So ring now, 5495 1015. 24 minutes past 8 here on Morton Bay's own radio station. You're listening to Sports Fever with Matthew and Swampy. And time now to talk some local basketball. And Johnny is on the line is one of the stars from, uh, well, I guess they call them the all-conquering Caboolture Suns, uh, Blake Bryant. Good morning to you. Morning, guys. Now, we had you on earlier in the year before the start of the first game, Blake. Um, and uh, for the listeners aren't aware, tell us about how good the season's going since we last spoke. Well, definitely. Um, we couldn't have asked for a better season to start off um, coming out winning five games from five. Um, we have had sort of the tail end of the competition um, first up, so um, really we're, our game to really judge about how good we're actually going this season will be against Runaway Bay, but um, still to come out and beat teams by 30-plus points is still pretty good in our, in our, um, in our books. Yeah, Blake, yeah, you're certainly putting the hurt on some of those sides and, and winning by really big margins as well. Is there is there one game in that stretch of five that um, you could pick out as, as sort of the best victory of the season so far? I know you guys will hold that uh, derby win against the, the Clippers in the first game of the season pretty special, but are there any others that really stand out as a big win that, that the boys will build on for the rest of this season? Um, we had a few. We had uh, one against Warwick um, where we basically uh, ran over him by 63, but I think the game against um, Gold Coast was, uh, last weekend at home was um, one we can really build on. Um, really started out great and uh, ended up with a 32-point win, so that's, I think, what we'll build off this season. Um, everything we were just working on throughout the season really showed uh, last Saturday night, so it's really good. It's really good stuff to see. Now, one of the big problems that the Suns had last season was conceding way too many points in the first quarter and, and most of the time coming back quite strong, but uh, just leaving far too much work to do in the closing stages of the game. It, it problem seems to have been all but erased this season. Uh, has that been a real key for you guys, starting those games really strong? Yeah, we're trying to come out of the blocks really, really hard and just keeping that foot on the pedal and um, scoring quickly. Uh, Keeping teams down low defensively has really worked. So our defence, to be honest, has been better than pa the past years. So we've only let an average of 311 points against us this season. So if we can keep that way, we'll be good. 
one of the big things that I've noticed looking over the results each week as well has been the production that you're getting off the bench as well. There's, there's no one out there scoring 30 or 40 points in these wins. There's 15 to you know 12 to 15 points on ne- across nearly every player that's taken to the floor for the Suns. Has, has that been a, a another big thing that's contributed? The you know getting production from the bench and, and everyone chipping in and having so many scoring options. Exactly right. Uh, the guy coming off the bench, we go really deep. So it doesn't matter if um, one person comes off, another person that comes on will we'll have that ability to score. Uh, our players are designed to get these guys that are coming off the bench points and um, it's going to be very hard to stop us if we're all, we all keep scoring the way we have been. It's been a fantastic start. Now, of course, this weekend you guys are away to the Brisbane Capitals who sit with two wins and two losses for the season. So perhaps just warming up, uh, what's going to be the, uh, the plan for Saturday night? Same as every week, just get out, um, first score, first stop, and just get out and play some real hard, solid defence and capitalise on turnovers and just run and gun. So should be hard at Brisbane, always a tough game to play, um, especially being at 8 o'clock at night. Um, and an away game, so it should be good. We'll get there early, talk about stuff, and just hopefully get it done and make it six and six. You said you guys hadn't faced the the ultimate competition in the season yet, and you picked up Runaway Bay as one of the competitors. Tell us why they are so strong, and why you guys are marking that down as a big clash. Uh, Runaway Bay have always been our competitors. Um, they've got a lot of older guys that have been around for a while and can really play the game good. Um, they've got a good inside and outside game, and they're just—they're always tough, just brutally tough to play against. So that will be—that'll be a really great game to come and watch. And that's also on at uh, the Centenary Lake Stadium on Saturday, the 30th of June. So anyone that wants to come down and have a uh, have a watch at seven o'clock, um, come down and have a have a see of us uh, play Runaway Bay. Absolutely, and just or just before that, I think you guys are away this week to the Capitals and away next week as well, but uh, we'll be back, I believe it's the uh, the, the 20th, is that right? Uh, or, or the 23rd of June um, at, at Centenary Lakes Complex against the Seahawks uh, and then of course the big one, the big clash against Runaway Bay the week after, so uh, some fantastic basketball coming up in late June. We'll definitely uh, remind all the listeners as those weeks approach, but uh, uh, good luck for, for the rest of the season, Blake. It's been a, a fantastic Fantastic start for you guys. Thank you very much. Um, before we let you go, Blake, last time we had you on, uh, uh, we asked you for your NBA tip. You tipped the Heat. Now we're into the uh, Western and Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, heat looking a bit of trouble. Are you happy to stick with them as your tip, mate, or we'll let you, we'll let you change if you want? No, I'm definitely going to have to change, but i um, copped a bit of uh, flack at training for saying the Heat, but I'm ha- having to go with OKC. Um, and I think it's going to end up being um, Oklahoma Thunder versus Boston, I think, in the final. But, yeah, Heat, heat are looking terrible. You're on uh, with Tarantula and Westbrook and uh, Harden. Are you all going to grow a beer uh, James Harden style? That might be a good look. Yeah, I've already, I'm already starting mine, so it should be good. <laughs> well, look forward to it. Well, uh, good luck, Blake, and uh, good luck with your tip with OKC. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Blake. Yeah, Swamp, I know it's your birthday. But you're a Heat fan, you're a massive Heat fan. Bit of a bandwagon jumper, but we won't mention that. Can, can Heat dig themselves out of trouble? Just to set it up for any people that aren't, haven't been following the NBA conference finals, we've got Miami Heat versus Boston in the, in the east, and in the west we've got uh, the San Antonio Spurs and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, after the first two games of each conference finals, they're, they're seven matches long, Heat and Spurs look good things, but it's all turned around, and uh, uh, OKC and Boston Celtics have uh, won the last three games. Yeah, they have, and uh, look, all credit to, to Boston in those three games. I, I've watched uh, most of the last two, um, of course, being a big Heat fan, and uh, the, 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 the senior man of the season, uh, Kev, uh, Kevin um Sorry, Kevin Garnett, I'm thinking. Of, of You're all France. flustered, aren't oh, you? You're no. on your ropes, you He's Heat fans, uh, and you've gone to water. Garnett, the big man, has just been unstoppable for the Celtics, and, and Ron, Rajon Rondo, their, their you know, talisman point guard, has, has been just so good as well. And Look, the Heat are in trouble, but um, I'm, I'm confident it's going to be a seven-game series. Um, I, I'm nervous 
about Boston charging. But uh, look, the Heat have got all, all the weapons there that they need to, um, to, to to really get over this Boston side. Um, they just haven't all clicked. And, and in those first two games, Boston really figured out how to exploit that weakness of Chris Bosch not being there for the Heat. But look, they played out of their skin, Boston, these three games to get over them. They've been 2 OT. Or well, one OT and then a very very close one yesterday. So the heat of they're, they're, they're not out of this yet. I am nervous. I'll give you that back at back, back at Boston for for game six. But uh, I'm still sticking on the heat. Unlike to all the listeners out there, and there'll be ones that'll be shocked here that uh, one M Duncan is sitting across from me in a Celtic shirt. Is normally a Lakers supporter. I think just to rub it in a little bit. Can you explain yourself? There, yeah, Andy? most certainly. Oh, you're allowed to have an East and a West team, aren't you? Isn't no, that, that's allowed. No, 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 no. It's just a stir up swamp. This is. <laughs> I found this old Celtic. Shirt. And as a Lakers fan, you know they're the real arch rivals of Celtics. Well, that's it. Yes, but no one likes the Heat. No one. <laughs> hey, while we're talking about the, the NBA, Matty, I wanted to run this one, one, one by you. Seven-game final series. I, I tell you what, we have an obsession with, with the ultimate, the grand final game here in Australia. But the more I watch international sport and the more I watch final series, the more I love them. It's, 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 it's a really true representation of the best side between the two. Whether a seven-game series, but like they do playing the NBA, would be an answer in... In every sport, I don't know, but like you said, in in the series that we've had, Miami and, and San Antonio two nil up, looking like they're going to run away with it, and uh, Oklahoma and Boston coming back to lead three two in both of those series, and you'd have to say that the best teams are, are sitting on top in those conferences at the moment. They've they've really stood up, you know, in in three of the five games, and I, I like these longer series uh, more the, the more and more that I watch of them. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I, whether it work in Australia, I, I, I think the the states just have that that showmanship around it in series, and we see they they do the same thing in baseball and um, and NBA. It, it's a great spectacle. Whether it would work in our grand finals, I don't know. And I, I think the the physical nature, I guess, of of particularly league and AFL, we don't see them have the series in in NFL as such. So probably the physical nature of, of those sports probably doesn't allow yourself to have those. Those match series and, and that one game where it's all laid on the line, I guess, kind of sets up. But we, you know, we do see the three match Origin series, which is which is good to see. But yeah, no, it uh, it's it's a great spectacle and, and uh, also a great money earner for the NBA. Isn't oh, of course, it? of yeah. course. The, the, the one thing that I like about it the most is that it takes one decision, one mistake. Uh, you know, it takes those those one instances that could cost a team, you know, a, a season. Um, out of play because it's you know you'd say that it all comes out in the wash across seven mm. games. Yeah, no. So and I guess and then on the flip that can be the beauty of a, a one-off grand final too, can't it? That you know any mistake and that's that's the game. So anyway, we're looking forward to it. You know, I've had a sneaky bet on the Spurs. I was counting my cash. I thought I was a genius, but they're in trouble as well. I might so. have to buy my own Texas rib soon. Yep. I'd, I promised the boys if, if San Antonio won, I'd shout them Texas ribs. Looks like we're going to be hungry. Could be, could be. Look, it's uh, they're not out of it yet. We've got game six today, and I, I wouldn't bet on. I wouldn't be surprised if we have game sevens in, in both of these series. Yep. Well, if they if they do get through now, swap so extra sauce as well on those oh, ribs. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's an extra incentive. Uh, Twenty six to nine. Time for a song. We'll be back to talk to the worst tipper in Australia. Shane Moon. It's 23 to 9 here on Sports Fever, and we're only minutes away from talking to Shane Moon, possibly the worst tipster in Australia. So we'll try and get Mooney on the line and see if he can tip a winner. We uh, think he got beat last week. We're just confirming the scores from when we spoke to him two weeks ago, but uh, we'll get him on the line now. We'll be back with his tips. It's that time of the year again. The Caboolture Show, starting Friday the 8th of June till Sunday the 10th. There's the usual sideshow alley, but this year performing live is the Crack Up Sisters, Magic Mal, Professor Wallace's Puppet Theatre, and Australia's Living History Show. And that's just during the day. Once the stars are out, there'll be Monster Trucks Friday and Saturday night from 6.30, followed by everyone's favourite, Fireworks. And to finish the show, the famous Demolition Derby kicks off Sunday afternoon at 2.30. Located at the Caboolture Show, Grounds, it's a great weekend out for family and friends. The Caboolture Show, Friday the 8th of June till Sunday the 10th. Don't miss out. It's 22 minutes to 9 here on Sports Fever with Matthew and birthday boy Peter Swampy Marsh. Time now to talk to Australia's, officially it's been declared, Australia's worst tipster, Shane Moon. Good morning to you. Ah, morning guys, happy birthday Swampy, I'm a week older than you, mine was last week. Oh, there you go, good people have birthdays around this time of year, Mooney. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Not good tippers though. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> score last week and you didn't call. Perfect score with how loud on you. Uh, that's unlucky, isn't it? Hey? I, I, I bet Parry to beat Cronulla, the giant killers, and we rolled them with, with all... Oh, the- listen to this We He jumped off. You've jumped. You've barred Parramatta. At the start of the year, you said they'd win the premiership. They lost one game. You jumped off, and now you're, now you're eels for life again. Mate, we're on, we're on the road now to the semi-finals, and then we'll see what happens from there. Jeez, you're not bad. Now, the week before, we've gone back through the schools. You took on Gordon from Burp and Gary, and you got beat. <laughs> Couldn't have. You guys are dodging it up. No, I'm not. You can bring in all the auditors you want. It's um, <laughs> Gordon pipped you uh, four games to three there, Moody. I'm sorry. And you know who did it? It was the Sneaky Panthers that week that, uh, that got up over St George that uh, was the difference. I can't believe the Panthers beat St George. They have up and down of that. You're unlucky. Gordy obviously had the good mail from Gar School. Now, is there any the bit of mail floating around? You've thrown in the resume to the NRL to take over David Gallagher. Job. Mate, well, I can't tip. I've got to be able to do something successfully, don't I? <laughs> so we, we, they can't at least accuse you of uh, oh, I'll fixing any matches when you're in their mood because you just fix them in the wrong direction. So yes. I think you'd be perfect. Mate, I reckon if I went in there, Parramatta would have an increased budget to players, get rid of all the Kiwi coaches, and I think we're a champion. We'll win the premiership. <laughs> you're back. You're back. Well, anyway, we'll we'll see it. We'll see how you go tipping this while, this week, and and we'll put this on a re- in your resume, and we'll send it off to to John Grant there and see how you go. Now, first things at first, mon- uh, Friday night, uh, the Melbourne Storm, a depleted Melbourne Storm, take on the West Tigers. Mate, um, I think Storm's going to suffer their second loss in three weeks. I think uh, Tigers are going to give it to them. The Tigers to dust Storm. Now, the Newcastle Knights take on the Canberra Raiders. Isn't this a good clash? Unbelievable. They're both going awful. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, just like Bill and Ben, the flower pot men. Which is better? Um, mate, I, I'm going to... Stick with Bennett. I think he could hold the key to this one. Um, I think he's a superior tactician. I think he might get uh, Knights across the line. That might be another job for you coming up too, Mooney. I reckon the Raiders' uh, Raiders' role, if he didn't have a few relations in high places, I reckon he's already been gone, David Ferner, the Raiders' coach. Absolutely. There's um, two opportunities uh, coming up in there around the place. Parramatta, the Raiders... And, and old Wayne Bennett, if he wasn't so successful and had such a great pedigree, I think they'd be knocking on his door shortly. Yeah, there were a few teams travelling very ordinary. Now, the Sharks take on the rejuvenated Titans. You're a bit of a Titans fan as well. They've hit some form in recent weeks. Mate, they, they have, and um, I think Sharkies, um, with, uh, with, without the uh, Gallon and, um, and the... What's his name? Um, oh, I've lost his name. Yeah, five eight there. Uh, Tony. I think... Yeah, I think with them in the New South Wales side, I think, um, you know, the Titans could get up over uh, the Sharkies. Titans to beat the Sharks. Now, the Roosters take on the Broncos. Uh, Roosters missing Pierce and the Broncos missing their origin stars, but uh, have still put a fairly uh, good-looking team on the paddock. Mate, they have, um, but I think uh, maybe... Uh, east at home, I think they can um, give the Broncos. They usually give them a bit of a dust up down there uh, uh, histor- historically um, around this time of the year. Broncos always suffering the state of origin um, and that. And I think uh, East will roll them down there, mate, at home. East to dust the Broncos. And the Penny Panthers uh, take on the New Zealand Warriors at uh, CUA Stadium there in Penrith. Uh, mate, Panthers have been costing me a win here and there, everywhere. I can't back them. I, uh, I'm going to stick with the Warriors. Uh, I think uh, the boys from across the ditch, I think they uh, look good. They've got no state of origin representatives, and, uh, and I think they'll do well. Fair enough. Now, Swamp, uh, Sarah from Whamuran, I think, is rung in this morning. Um, and who has she tipped? Look, you, you, there's only one difference here, Mooney, and, and Sarah is a big Panthers fan, and uh, she, she likes how they're travelling at the moment. Despite all the up and downs, she thinks they're, they're in for one here at home. So uh, the only difference we've got is she's tipped the Panthers to get over the Warriors on uh, in the last game of the round there. So just the one difference. Come, so comes down to the Monday nighter. Well, mate, well, hopefully the Kiwi team can do something better than the Kiwi coach can do for me. 
Now, Mooney, very quickly before we let you go, mate, there's a, a wonderful milestone coming up this weekend for the uh, the Bribey Island Warrigals Juniors Club. Uh, I know you love your Warrigals there, Mooney. Now, 30 years that they'll be celebrating of junior footy at Burnie Foley Oval. You must be looking forward to the weekend, Mooney, there for the club. Well, I reckon it's great. I'm going to head down on Friday night to watch some of the games and that, and then uh, head over over the weekend. The juniors have really put together a, a good itinerary of um, some activities and that, and uh, I think it's great to see them achieve 30 years, and what a great bunch of juniors they have down there, mate. They have been on our league, a great team, and they've got some really exceptional juniors coming through. Uh, there's a lot of good history there in Bribey, um, as we all know. And I just think uh, juniors are getting stronger and stronger. Absolutely. We've got a couple of games tomorrow night uh, and then an invitation-only function, but a, a massive day of rugby league there on Saturday. All the juniors, all day. Um, at Jumping Castles, I believe. At children's Entertainment, live entertainment afterwards. And, uh, and this is one that's uh, 1M Duncan in the studio here. Uh, Mooney might be heading across the island to bid on. We've got, a, I believe, a sports memorabilia auction coming up on Saturday night with a, a special commemorative of Warrigal's 30 Years jersey signed by... By three of the the best, although the best rugby league products to come out of the Moreton Bay region, full stop. In uh, in Matt Gillette, Jack Reed, and and Dane Hogan, I've, I've all chipped in to, to sign the, the the jersey of their junior club. So a wonderful piece of memorabilia they're going up for auction, and uh, should be a really great uh, weekend there for for the junior Warrigals who have, have come from one team in, in eighty two to fourteen teams today. So a really great achievement for the club. Absolutely, and they uh, all credited can. You consider how small Bribey was 30 years ago when they first started uh, to where we are today. No, and absolutely, hats off. It's a, it's a great club and uh, it has a lot of success both at that junior and senior levels over the last uh, 30 years. So, no, a great club and uh, a very proud part of the Moreton Bay region. Absolutely, guys. Um, looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, anyone come on over, especially Saturday and Saturday night, be an awesome experience. No, it uh, it should be an absolute cracker. Thanks again, uh, Mooney, and uh, good luck in your tipping this week. Not a problem. Happy birthday, Swappy, and um, keep giving it to him, Matty. Keep him honest. I will. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> All the best, boys. All the best, listeners. Catch us all later. Cheers, Mooney. 11 to 9 here on 101.5, and uh, we've been talking about it throughout the show, but this Saturday, a huge day in uh, racing in Queensland. It's the Stradbroke Handicap, and it's the race that every Queensland trainer wants to win. Uh, It's the richest race in Queensland, and joining us on the line is one of the star trainers in Queensland uh, from a great training family. We're talking to Jason McLaughlin. Good morning to you. How are you, mate? Uh, mate, uh, very good and very excited. It loves uh, the lead-up to the Stradbroke. It's a great race. And uh, you're there this year, mate, uh, with a, a live hope in the Stradbro- Stradbroke Handicap. Oh, look, this horse, this is a race I'm setting for. And, uh, you know, like, being a handicap, he comes into it so well weight-wise. You know, unfortunate the barrier, but, you, you know, they're the cards you dealt. But he's a horse who races off the speed anyhow. But, um, look, I think he's got an undeniable hope. Uh, we're, of course, talking about feeling ready. And for, the, for those people that aren't racing fans, uh, he's, uh, he's a bit of a, a strange horse, I guess we could say. He's only ever won two races in his career, but uh, two of the biggest, Jason. Yeah, look, he's won $3.5 million in prize money and cost 120000 So, to me, I don't care if he never wins another race. But um, he won the Golden Slip in the Magic Millions, obviously. But, look, this horse has I've really tried to peak him with this race and... And, you know, but, you know, like with a bit of luck in running, which we're due to have, you know, I think the horse will be very hard to beat. Three starts ago, Jason, we've seen him uh, at Flemington uh, in the straight six down in the, in the Newmarket Handicap. Uh, of course, uh, Hayliss won that race and is considered probably Australia's uh, second best sprinter. But uh, the run from your, from feeling ready on that day come from a mile back and flew home. It was an enormous run. Oh, mate, look, he, he went super, and um, you wouldn't believe it, he drew 22 that day as well, but he, um, it's a straight race, obviously, but look, his form, his form in his last half a dozen runs has been unbelievable, like, he hasn't won a race for a while, but he's, he's probably won 400 grand in the last 12 months, 18 months, um, I think the horse is really, I've had a few little problems about going out, and, and I think I've got to the bottom of him, and I, I, I just think he'll really... Mate, it takes, it takes a power of beating, I'm telling you. 
You've uh, got uh, former South African jockey Glyn Schofield on board, and he's been in great form himself. What are going to be the directions to Glyn uh, when you leg him up on Saturday? Mate, we actually brought Glyn to Australia. Dad did, when we, my late father. He brought him to Australia from South Africa, and so there's a good association there and connection, and I won't tie him down. He just ride him where he's comfortable, but... You know, he'd be desperate to win too because he's a South African, mate. They still got their lunch money. <laughs> um, but, mate, look, he's no, he knows the horse's racing pattern. He hasn't got Brad all his weight. Brad's my normal choice of rider. But Brad's a bit heavy and um, so Glenn, he'll have a yarn to Glenn as well, you know. And just ride him a bit quiet and, and hopefully there'll be a good tempo in the race and he'll be hard to... Hard and what, what would it mean to you, Jase, to, to win a Stradbroke? Like I said at, at the start of the interview, it's a race every Queenslander grows up wanting to win. What, what would it mean, mate, to uh, if feeling ready well, went across the, past the pace Stradbroke. first? Well, mate, I'll tell you what, I've won a Golden Slipper, but it would mean more to me to win the Stradbroke because I'm a queen, I'm marooned to the bone. That's exactly right, mate. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be cheering um, on Saturday for feeling ready if we see it flashing down the outside. And, of course, your dad, you mentioned your, your, your late father, and it's three years ago, nearly to the day that, that we, we lost the big fella, a, a legend of, uh, of racing, and uh, we broadcast out of Caboolture here and, and, and a, a real legend around the Caboolture area, of course, with that Thornhill Park property. Um, just an enormous name in Queensland well, racing. Well, Caboolture boys, yes, yeah, so. I, um, Caboolture is a special place to me as well, you know, like, I, I grew up there, so I'm an old boy, I feel old oh, boy, don't tell anybody that, but... No, we won't hold that against you. <laughs> no, mate, yeah, bloody... But no, no, it's, look, yeah, that area is very special to us, you know, and um, it's funny, the old man didn't win a strad boat, but, uh, you know, it'd be good to win it for him. Yep, uh, he'll be looking down and cheering, no doubt at all. Now, you've uh, got a couple of other runners uh, in on at Eagle Farm on Saturday. Can you steer us into another winner or not? Uh, a couple of good runners, too. Interject's a lovely filly, a two-year-old filly. She's drawn awkward, but my other horse, I think Basile Tigra can nearly win, mate. He's drawn good, he's got a fair bit of weight, but he's worked the joint down, and he's sort of had a few little issues before his last start. He ran into Group 1, he's back to listed company. So I think it's a massive drop, you know. Well, mate, it's, it's like fighting Mike Tyson and going fighting a bloke in the pub, you know, it's a big difference. Um, you know, group one to listed, but he's flying the horse and I think he's probably my best runner of the day, mate, for Sol Tigra. For Sol Tigra, race four, number one in the David Jones Lightning Handicap. Well, we'll be cheering for both of those. Well, we'll be cheering for all three on Saturday. And like you said, uh, the pride of Caboolture will call her feeling ready if he can salute in the Stradbroke. And uh, if you do uh, get the money, we'll no doubt probably get you on next Thursday and uh, hope you finish celebrating by then. It might be my pleasure to talk to you. Good on you, Jase. Ple- uh, yeah, thanks for your time this morning. Swamp. Uh, Jason McLaughlin, like he said, a proud Caboolture boy. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, the listeners might remember last year that um, this was the race that uh, our, our Bribe Island owned racehorse Worm um, ran in and caught a few wise in. So if, if you're looking for a, a local local hope to tip this year, I don't think you could go past feeling ready there for former Caboolture boy. Jason, wonderful stuff and best of luck to him at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be cheering for uh, feeling ready. Now, just for those listeners that want to jot down the tip, his tip, his big tip that he tipped, uh, his best chance of the day was Fasil Tigray, and it's in race four, number one, and then the Stradbroke handicap, feeling ready, is uh, race seven, number, I'll just confirm that, I'd hate to give the wrong number, race one, no, race seven, number seven. So for all the people lucky there with the lucky number sevens. Tell you what, good birthday's on the 7th of June, so I reckon I might have to put a little bit of a tickle on that. My wife's the 7th of July, the 7th of the 7th. There's the omen. There you go. (laughs) We've tipped it. And for uh, those who uh, want to follow Rupert McCall's tip, he tipped Sea Siren. Um, And it's number six. So if you want to throw them in a Quinella race, uh, race seven, number six, Sea Siren, Rupert McCall tips. And Jason McLaughlin's horse, race seven, number seven, feeling ready. So they're the two big tips out of Sports Fever this morning. Absolutely. And you know with the Sports Fever bumps, Swampy, they're probably good things. Hey, we got the Suns, Blake Bryan on before the season kicks off for the Suns. And look what happened. Five wins later. They're on top of the table and undefeated. Yep, absolutely. If you are having a bet, though, on the weekend, please bet responsibly absolutely. and within your means. It's four minutes to nine here on Sports TV. We're starting to wind down. Uh, the uh, siren's gone to say that we're nearly, nearly out of time, but 
some huge news in uh, the triathlon and I guess in the in the Olympics world this week. Yeah, absolutely massive, Matty. One of our absolute Moreton Bay favourites, uh, joiner triathlete Emma Jackson, uh, found out the wonderful news on Friday night after a, a long, and we don't have time to go into it now, but a long, controversial and, and protracted selection process for the Australian triathlete team for the London Olympics, uh, found out that uh, essentially she had pipped uh, Beijing gold medalist Emma Snowsill to earn her spot on the team alongside Emma Moffat and Erin Densham uh, for the Australian women's triathlon side. So Emma Jackson, 20 years old from Joyner, former Pine River State High School student, uh, a real competitor and a wonderful girl, wonderful family as well. Now, we, we can't say that it's a, it's, it's a definite, but there is an appeal process going before the Olympic Committee at the moment. Snowsill has appealed that decision. Um, and, and you can understand why it was a real flip of the coin between the two girls there. Um, while Snowsill obviously has that wonderful pedigree, no one would take that away from her she hasn't raced well in the last couple of years and, and emma our local our emma jackson our, our local girl here has pipped her in i think four of the last five races that they've raced together um and emma jackson looked at all but a certainty um in about january this year finished fourth in the itu women's world triathlon rankings uh the highest australian finished fourth on the actual london olympic course last year as well and, and looked at an all-money shot but uh, had some real troubles at the start of the year with her form and then very recently had one more race in Madrid where it essentially looked like her last chance to, to get a spot but had to pull out with stomach cramps but um, look, she got the nod. Uh, there is the appeal process there at the moment, so that still still does have to go through. But at the moment, Emma Jackson, former Pine River State High Girl and junior, sorry, joiner uh, resident, uh, will be off to the London Olympics in July. So wonderful news there. Such exciting news for Emma, and uh, we'll just add another one to our Morton Bay list of Olympic stars. Um, and we'll, in the next couple of weeks, go right through that list of all our, no matter what sport, we'll go right through the list of all our Morton Bay stars. The one that we are still waiting for at the moment a Sports Fever favourite in Wemmerans, Jody Schultz. The Hockey Roo side hasn't been finalised yet, but uh, I'll tell you what, you've heard it here first. Jody Schultz will be in that team. You'd be you'd be shattered if she wasn't too, <laughs> but you've got the good mail, I reckon, she'll, Swamp. She'll be there. She'll be there. So... Well, it's a, it's a long list, isn't it? It, it, it is, and we, of course we've got our, our, our swimmers in uh, in Kylie Palmer and Jess Shipper, both uh, Marumba Downs residents, and both parents still kick around in Marumba Downs, and uh, they're uh, look they're they're red hot chances for medals there as well. Kylie, especially, she's really hit some good form in the lead up, so one to watch out for. It definitely in, in the pool in London. Yep, and of course the first Australian that qualified for the Olympics as well. Mel Gorman, of course, in the open water swimming. And uh, apologies, Mel, for, 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 uh, for my memory lapsing there. But uh, coached by, of course, Reckless City High Performance uh, legendary coach Ken Ward. And look, I tell you what, he gave us the tip earlier in the year competing at the World Championships that she would be a, a chance for that medal. So another big one to watch. And of course, former. St. Peter's and Tullawong High, now residing in Victoria, but we don't mention that. Uh, Liesl Jones, fourth Olympics. Of course, and a wonderful nod for Liesl there to, to be along to her fourth Olympics. Rough chance probably of carrying the flag too for the uh, opening uh, yeah, ceremony. Real smoky to carry the flag, I think. Yep, so what an honour. Uh, it'd be the biggest honour since she was on assembly at St. Peter's one day, <laughs> probably. <laughs> anyway, that's the show. We're done and dusted for another day. Thanks, Wompy. Happy birthday. Cheers, Matty.